Today on Wood Turning, we're going to the moon and back. <laughs> we're going to make a rocket ship. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools. So this inspiration for today's project came from the fact that there's a little girl, McKenna, our niece, <laughs> who is four years old and for the last year or two all she's ever wanted to be is an astronaut. So we thought we'd make her a rocket ship box that she could put things in. It's really pretty. And you notice we have brass rings here for the threading. It's really cool. There's a company called Stainless Steel Bottle Stoppers, and I'm bad. They gave me a set of these about a year ago and said, can you use them? And they look like this when they come for you. And they're threaded, they're knurled, so they can glue into holes really well so it gets a good grip when you glue it and they're usually used for urns and things like that so i wanted to do something a little more upbeat for my niece's birthday and i was looking on the interweb and i found a friend of mine's youtube site dread knots k-n-o-t-s d-r-e-a-d and it's daryl uh, jones's site and he's a really cool guy does some amazing videos he did a rocket ship and there's one part of the rocket ship he did that was really helpful to me to figure out how to do this project so i asked him if i could use that idea and he said sure go ahead so that's really cool so we're going to be working with a big old block of cherry here it's about four inches square maybe about three and three quarters i'm going to take my speed center six here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the centers on both ends and then we're going to mount this on the lathe and start turning our rocket ship Okay, before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors, Robust Lays and Easywood Tools, because without their support, we wouldn't be here doing these videos. Also, I am an authorized Robust dealer, so if you're looking for a lathe, give me a call. <laughs> so I went ahead and got the blank. It's mounted between centers. I'm using a stab center on the drive center and a live center on this end. It's a robust live center. It's really cool. Works well. We're going to rough this out. So I'm going to grab a big axe here, <laughs> a big roughing gouge, because this is a lot of wood that's going to be spinning around, and I want something that has a lot of weight to it while I'm turning. Bring the speed up here. So I'm probably going about uh, 1,100 RPM right now. I might pick it up here in a second. But I'm just shifting my weight to make this cut. And just a few passes, I'll have this blank all rounded out. So I'm working on the shape right now. You can see that we turned a couple of tenons on either end because we want to hold this in the chuck on both ends like a regular boxwood. Boxwood? <laughs> That's a joke. Anyway, anyway, so here's our rocket ship inside the wood. So this will be the top. This will be the bottom. This line right here is the center line, that big old bump there. And then this line here is going to be where we make the incision to separate the two boxes. But I'm going to be using a square tipped uh, easy wood tool. This one is square all the way across with sharp edges. I find it's just really easy to use it to, <laughs> easy wood, to clear out the wood and get a rough shape. So we'll work on this for a few minutes and then we'll go to the next step. So I have the shape I want now and this is about where I'm going to part this off. I want to come over and make a relief cut here. And I want to take this down to about two and a quarter inches because that is the diameter of the tenon I need to make to hold the threaded brass ring insert on. Let me cut this away a little bit and I'll explain it a little bit more in a second. So I've got my calipers now set to the diameter that I need for this. And like I said, I'll show you a little more here. I'm going to part down. Once that passes over, I'm to the right diameter. And I'm just going to level this out now by eye to that same diameter. This doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to tweak it here in a minute. But it's just really important that you do not go too narrow on here because of what I'm going to show you. The kit 
comes with a threaded part and another part that goes on top. So this part is going to be going on to the top part of the rocket. And it's going to be in here just like this. So let's show you like that. So I'm trying to make a tenon that will fit into here. So if I cut the tenon too small, it won't fit, right? It'll be loose. So I'm trying to leave the tenon a little bit wide before I part this off. Then I have the tenon there already. So the next step is I'm just going to take my really thin parting tool and come in here and now get rid of this excess wood and start parting it off. So I'm dishing out the inside of the top and uh, using a standard straight carbide here. And the only problem on end grain sometimes when you're pushing in against the grain like this is that you'll get tear out. And I want to switch to a negative brake scraper. It's a little torn out there. So that'll let me come in and make a really smooth cut because you don't want to have to hand sand this. This is really tough to sand. But you're kind of looking at this shape and going, what have you done, Tim? <laughs> so I simply made my tenon and I then did a recess. So let me get this little piece of metal here. So here's my ring, right? So pull this out of the way for you. Pull this out of the way for you. <laughs> so this fits over the tenon just like so. You see the recess in there? Because I want the brass to be flush with the lip. I don't want to be proud of it because when things connect, I don't want a gap. But you can see I have it flush here too. It fits nicely. So we're just gonna glue this in place and set it off to the side and start working on the base. So I'm making a pass and just flattening the surface here. This is the bottom of the box now. One thing you want to really make sure when you do both the top and the bottom is that this is perfectly flat. And that is because as you're putting these things together, they're going to um, mesh like that and you don't want any gap showing. So the next thing I'm going to do, whoops, pull this out of the way. <laughs> this is the outer diameter of my ring that's going to go in here. So I'm going to cheat here and come in a little. Okay, so that mark is, there we go. So the marks just matched up to that. So now what I want to do is start hollowing this out a little bit and work my way into here because we're going to be making a recess to fit the ring into. So the ring will be going into that hole. So it's going to take a little bit, but not too much trouble. Check that. <laughs> First try. Okay. I'm just going to make that a little bit deeper and then we're going to hollow out the inside. So we're hollowed out, sanded, everything's the way we want it. I'm going to thread this ring on. <laughs> Easier said than done for me. Okay, now I got it in there tight. Not super tight, but tight. Now matching the grain on one of these things can be a little difficult. So we're going to try it this way. So this is grain match about right there. So I'm going to take this out. We're going to take some medium sour nacrylate glue and I'm going to put a bead in here. I don't want to go crazy with this because if I put too much, we'll have spill out and it'll look ugly and it's hard to cover it up. So we're just going to put a bit in there 
It's a nice tight fit, so that should make contact pretty quickly when I put this on. So now, <laughs> now that I moved it, <laughs> I don't know where my grain match is again. Okay, so here we go. There it is. So I'm going to push this in straight. Let's see. I'm going to take it back out because that came loose a little bit. Do it again. This is really fun. Because there we go. So now we got our grain match there. I'm just going to set that and let it dry like that. Hopefully there's no squeeze out and I can get the top back off. We'll see. Okay, so now I have it threaded together. Everything's dried. I brought this back up. Yes, the lid did come off. I checked that first. <laughs> so now we want to start shaping. This again is the top of the rocket. You can make any shape you want. The one important thing is, is that when you're down here making the bottom part of the rocket, make a straight line for about the last little inch or so of it because we need a flat surface surface to put the fins on so just keep that in mind other than that have at it and go crazy Okay, now it's time to do the fins, and this is where Daryl really helped me out. Uh, I modified his idea a bit, but it made a lot of sense. He took a solid piece of wood and drew his fin shape on there, took it to the bandsaw, cut the whole thing out. Then he turned it sideways and ran it through and cut three thin pieces out. Now, I happen to be lucky because I have a lot of thin pieces of wood left from another project, so I went ahead and just used double-sided tape on here. Now, let me show you. I also went with uh, canary wood because it looks like it's a flame. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so you can see why I wanted a straight side. See? That will line up perfectly with that edge and not be an issue. So now I just need to draw out the shape of my fin here. Let's see if I can get this right. We'll do one real quick because I'm not an artist. So we'll come down like so. Now I just want to see... Yeah, see that looks about right. So I'll just draw that out, go over to the bandsaw, cut it out, and then we'll set it up to glue it on. So I saved you from the fun process of sanding everything down. That's flat woodwork, right? <laughs> the only thing I did want to show you was when this goes up here to mate, because it's a round surface this way. Now I'm good with the flat, but it won't touch on both edges. It'll rock. So the trick I figured out was to take a rat tail file and just do this, go back and forth until you dish this out a little bit, then it touches on both sides when you glue it. So, gotta work on my rat tail for a bit. <laughs> It'll be gluing it up. So on the glue up, you gotta be careful not to use too much glue. I marked three little dots on here that are separated out to look like a triangle. We'll see if I'm good at that or not. I'll put this on here. It's a little wiggly at times, but now I'm going to hold it in place. I want to make sure that I'm straight, right? I'm going to take a little accelerator. Now I'm going to coat this with polyurethane in a minute. So if I have any bleed out from the glue, the polyurethane pretty much hides it really well. You see, there's two. Just got to put the third one on. Oh, this is looking beautiful. Look how that cherry comes out right there against the brass ring that uh, Stainless bottle, st bottle Stopper guys gave us. I really appreciate them sending that to me because I've been wanting to find a use for those, and it's really cool you can make a threaded box with that. And I do want to thank Daryl at Dreadnoughts. You got to look up his YouTube page because he does some really incredible work. He has such a positive attitude. It's really nice to see that these days, and he's got talent. So. I'm going to keep putting my finish on here, but that right there is how you make a rocket ship lidded box. Until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools, best in class carbide wood turning tools.